Yo, welcome back to the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's now time for Off the Press, and uh, we have uh, joining us today uh, the publisher of the Podium Media, Mr. Adimola Akimbola. Good morning. Yeah. Thank you for joining Thank us. You. Thank you. Morning to you. Thank you for inviting me. All right. Let's begin uh, our newspaper review this morning with the Daily Independent. The headline reads, Despite court ruling, federal government insists on licensing Twitter, others. Threatens to suspend Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, others. ECOWAS court bars government from prosecuting Twitter and users. Buhari OK's federal government team to dialogue with Twitter. Above the headline on the Daily Independent, leaking National Assembly building roof disrupts plenary. NLC to shut down Kaduna again as negotiations break down. Oil revenue, court orders federal government to pay Rivers Akwaibob $3.3 billion. Buhari seeks approval, Buhari seeks Senate approval for 895.84 billion naira supplementary budget. And SARS detainee released with her baby from prison. Buhari raises committee to address poverty, establishes equity fund. Oil subsidy caught jails Farouk Lawan seven years for demanding $3 million bribe from Otedola. Senate to grill finance minister over federal government's economic recovery plan. Buratai appointed Nigeria's ambassador to Benin Republic. All right, now moving on to the Nigerian Tribune. Uh, this morning, so what we can find there, there you see it. Lai Malami Pantami Fashola to engage with Twitter over a ban. Twitter promoting instability and act of terrorism, federal government alleges. ECOWAS court restrains federal government from prosecuting Nigerians for using Twitter. Also, the ABC of the 1963 constitution. Otedola dollars, uh, court sentences uh, Farukla one to seven years imprisonment. And also NDLA arrest doctor and ex-soldier for dealing in drugged cookies and cocaine. Troops intercept bandits in camouflage heading for Ibadan. And uh, a court orders the federal government to pay Rivers Akwaibom uh, $3.3 billion oil revenue. Two killed, 13 vehicles burnt in tanker explosion on Le Lagos Ibadan Expressway. And of course, uh, what we just spoke about this morning, National Assembly roof leaks during rainfall, lobby flooded. Unknown persons uh, cuts and takes away seven-year-old boy's hands in Quara. And uh, one or two others, Senate to investigate NIMC over 229 million naira contract. Last year, uh, Kaduna labor crisis, NLC to embark on nationwide strike, direct affiliate unions, state councils to begin mobilization. All right, moving on now to the Punch newspaper. The headline reads, um, Federal Government Disobeys on Law, Flouts Workers' Pension Remittance. <coughs> 121,543 retirees have less than 550,000 naira in their RSA balance, says PENCOM. Ex-TUC President Hesele says, Payment shortfall, inflation, double stroke for workers. Mushroom can generate 16 million jobs, 1.8 trillion naira revenue, according to growers. Ex-Rep Nawan jailed seven years over Atedala's $500,000 bribe. Bu Media chiefs say Buhari was born again Dikroman. D Buhari not born again di di Democrat, I beg your pardon, wants to return decree four through Lai Mohammed. I don't know why I was about to say diplomat there. Twitter wants ban lifted. Reps say suspension dictatorial, ill-timed. NG says NPC, NBC bills not to moderate but criminalize journalism. Also on the Punch newspaper, Pay Rivers, Akai Bomb, $3 billion from recovered $62 billion, court tells FG. Nine killed, 13 vehicles burned in Ogun tank explosion, a kitty crash. Female doctor, ex-soldier arrested for selling drugged cookies, cocaine, others. Foyer says, SFU police assaulted our VC over invitation letter. Guest flees as hotel uncovers murdered female companion. Detained under NTAS protests to release baby Christine Holds today. All right, and now on the Guardian newspapers, 
uh, Twitter's operation illegal despite ECOWAS court ruling. Federal government insists, uh, threatens to suspend Facebook, Instagram, uh, WhatsApp, and others. Malami Fashola Ahmed uh, lead federal government's delegation to engage Twitter. And also over 44 billion naira lost as digital and brand marketers decry continued suspension. Ecuador court stops federal government from prosecuting citizens from using app. A writer also acquired by court orders federal government to pay Rivers and acquired by $3.3 billion oil revenue. Farouk Lawan jailed 19 years for $500,000 bribe. And President seeks approval for $895 billion supplementary budget. Governors too small to decide for Ndigbo on Biafra. And uh, two die as Tanka explodes on Lagos Ibadan Expressway. Uh, good morning once again to uh, Demola Kingbola, and uh, thanks for joining us. I want us to start with the relevance of the ECOWAS court ruling, um, and of course, flow into the uh, deliberations between the Nigerian government and Twitter. Thank you once again for having me here this morning. Good morning, if you ask. Um, I feel a bit sad uh, to be called a Nigerian, really. Um, the way this Twitter on pass has dragged, the way it has gone on and on, it, it's shameful, really. It's really shameful because um, we shouldn't be found being involved in things like this in the 21st century. If it were to be a country like China or Russia or Korea, we, we, we probably will understand, but not Nigeria, not a country that um, touts itself as being a progressive democratic country. And if the ECOWAS court has intervened, what exactly do we have to gain as a country in protracting this Twitter issue? I, 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 I very much believe that the president is being wrongly advised by Malami, who um, I, 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 I dare to say has consistently displayed his crass ignorance of the laws that guide democratic structures and democratic institutions. And the same thing with the Minister of Information, Aladilai Mohamed, uh, who I see as someone uh, who, who, who is a bit arrogant professionally and, and who has consistently dragged the name of a nation into the mud on issues like this. In the first instance, we shouldn't have gotten to a stage where the ECOWA court will be the one adjudicated on an issue like this. It's something that we should have used common sense, we should have been able to resolve. But having gotten to that stage, and once the ECOWA court has intervened, we, 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 we do not have any moral or legal uh, justification for continuing to hold on to this position that Twitter has to be registered. Okay, so by the time we register Twitter, what government is trying to do is to bring Twitter under the same law that guides TV stations in Nigeria so that Twitter can be um, subjected to censorship, which is not going to work. Okay, it, it is. There's nothing that is being said on Twitter that is not being said on Facebook, that is not being said on even the print media. So like I said last week, government should stop chasing the shadow. Let's face the real issues that are confronting us as a nation. So I would expect that this issue should end here. The ECOWAS court has intervened, and as a leading ECOWAS country, we should respect what the court has said at this point. Good thing that the government has put together a team, okay, to discuss with Twitter. And I sincerely hope we are not going to that meeting to dictate terms that are unreasonable, that will continue to portray us as a country that is backward in the 21st century. Unfortunately, a lot of Nigerians are doing well out there in the diaspora, and we are just ashamed with the way the country is carrying on on, on, on on this Twitter issue. We have more to lose. We have more to lose. People think that Twitter has more to lose. Maybe in financial terms, okay, Twitter may lose some ad revenue, may lose some other subscription, but in terms of reputation, Nigeria has a lot to lose. The collateral damage that this issue is, is doing uh, and that it has cost our, our brand, you, you you can't even quantify what if you you, you 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 can't place a value on it so for god's sake let this madness stop let this arrogance stop 
So Fashola Malami Pantami Le Mohammed should go to that meeting with the mindset of reconciling. We've made a mistake. Let us not go there and dig deeper. We've made a mistake. Let us go there and appeal to Twitter. No country has ever won a media war, especially a social media war. You can't win. Okay. You can't win it. All so, right. Ms. Yeah. Mother, many, many more interesting stories uh, we've seen on the papers this morning. Uh, taking a look here at the Daily Independent newspaper, we also see a threat by the Nigerian Labour Congress, NLC, to shut down Kaduna again as negotiations you know, breaks down. Remember the NLC strike, you know, that really shut down Kaduna State. Lots of other unions, associations in the state, you know, participated mm. in the strike, the airports, the railway services, yeah. electricity, you know, mm. but they eventually decided to negotiate. But now NLC's uh, president, Ayubawa, by saying that the Kaduna State government, you know, has failed to uh, basically honor the agreements that they reached in the MOU and that they are going back to the streets again. Do you think yeah. that NLC should have had a better approach to this? Because, you know, we spoke about this when they were about calling off the strike. That is this just something that yeah. is temporary, that they will go back to the streets again, and that's what we're seeing now. How do you think labor unions, you know, can get a holistic response from the government? So, someone like ASU, for example, now, that they, they, they're threatening to strike again because the federal government has reneged on the agreement to make sure that they fulfill this rather than call off the strike, go back to the streets again, and continue that cycle. Maybe we should ask ourselves, why was the strike embarked upon? Why did we allow it to get to that stage where there will be a strike? The way government officials clear in Nigeria, they behave as if instrument of government is instrument of question it's, a, it's, it's, it's an instrument of blackmail they carry on as if um the organized labor shouldn't have a say where there are extant laws guiding a particular transaction we should stick with the laws 100 percent you do not shift the goalposts in the in the where the match is going on Okay, if you look at what has happened in Kaduna State, it has also been due to the stubbornness of the state governor. Someone who believes that um, the executive arm of government has the final say in everything. I don't think Labour woke up overnight and said we are going to go on strike. I mean, if you trace the history of what has been happening between Labour and the state government, you see a lot of insincerity on the part of the government. You enter into an agreement, you do not fulfill that agreement. You do not respect the terms of that agreement. For God's sake, I mean, we are dealing with human beings who have families, we are dealing with people who have stakes. They are also stakeholders in the entity called Nigeria. Why can't we just respect them? Why can't we respect the laws that guide this relationship? So on this, I stand with NLC, whatever it takes, Sometimes we, we, we accuse them of being excessive. We accuse them of holding out um, for too long. But in the history of this country, tell me one thing that labor has gotten from government without fighting. Mm. Tell me one thing that government, that, that, that government has willingly done for workers without workers going on strike. In most cases, workers will, will have to beg, they will have to cajole government, they will have to threaten them before we do basic things, which I think is not right. Let's learn to respect agreement. So on this, right. I'm, I'm very much in tune with, with, with the NLC. All right, and uh, also now, let's talk uh, corruption. Um, Farouk Lawan, nine years later, has uh, been sentenced to seven years in prison for the $500,000 bribe uh, uh, you know, he received from FMU Tadela in 2012. What's your reaction to that? Yeah. It's a mixed reaction, really. One, I'm happy that this is happening. Uh, two, I'm not happy that it took nine years. And I'm not happy that he's getting away with seven years, which at the end of the day is going to end up being maybe three or four years. Okay. But most people will say, oh, thank God that he's even been prosecuted, he's even been um, sent to jail. But if you remember what we said there last week, the, the, the anti corruption laws need to be strengthened need to be well implemented the laws in a way reward corruption so for nine years the question is why did this was the all of nine years the all the main actors are in nigeria Lawan has been in nigeria or, or has been in nigeria all 
the information we need or that that was needed could have been got in. So I'm happy that that happened, but I'm not happy that he got a very light sentence. Okay, five hundred thousand dollars is a lot of money. One, then two, by virtue of his position, he was the chairman of an ad hoc committee that was set up to look, okay, circumstances surrounding waste subsidy fraud, and here you are collecting five hundred thousand dollars bribe. I'm sure if he had been offered more, he would have accepted it. So for me. It, 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 it's a good thing that this is happening, but I, I, I would have been happier if he had gotten a heavier sentence. We need to send very strong signals that we mean business. Seven years is a joke. It's a huge joke. Honestly, it is, if he had gotten like 30 years, I think that would have scared a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, but, but yes, can this be seen? Let's, let's be happy. Can, can this be seen as a win in the anti-corruption battle uh, for the current administration? Yes, it is a plus for this regime that this has been successfully um, concluded. But like I said last week, we want to see more of this. There are so many other cases that have dragged over the years. We want to see them to their logical conclusion. So I agree with you, yes, we should give government credit for getting this done, and we do use the opportunity to call on them to do more because we can definitely do more. All right. All right. So um, just related to that Twitter issue we discussed earlier on, um, on the front page of the Punch newspaper, uh, that story about media cheats, you know, they had said that Buhari is not a born-again Democrat and that he wants to return decree 4 through Lai Mohammed. There's lots of, you know, talk about this. It's in all the papers as well. We know that in 1984, the president passed decree 4. It was a protection against false accusations decree. You know, it was considered as one of the most repressive press laws ever enacted in Nigeria. So um, they're saying basically that Buhari is just trying to yeah. Um, introduced or reintroduced the Grifo under different guys using like Mohammed, the president is always comparing Nigeria to China, where in China you don't exactly have, you know, freedom. So um, do you see some, you know, maybe logic in what these people are saying? Yes, of course. The Grifo has been with us uh, in, in, through the back door. I mean, remember uh, what the Broadcast Organization of Nigeria has been doing um, finding Channel TV, um, threatening to shut down media houses. So what government is doing is basically trying to extend it, the, the, the decree for that has been brought back through the back door, extend it to Twitter, extend it to other areas, okay? And um, a repressive government usually regrets every act of repression, if not now, definitely years later, okay? 1984 to 2021, people have not forgotten Decree 4, they've not forgotten Decree 2, they've not forgotten the various repressive tendencies of that government. So long after this regime will have ended, we would not, we would not forget in a hurry all of this. And like the President said last week, history and posterity will judge him. Yes, of course, posterity will judge you uh, because in the midst of the suffering and economic hardship that people are going through, Repression is the last thing that you expect any sensible and sane government to do. This is the time for government to continuously use moral suasion, to, 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 to continuously use effective communication strategies to mobilize the people towards the achievement of its agenda. These are, the, these are, these are, these are unnecessary distractions. These right. battles that government is fighting right and left over the media it's, it's, it's just unnecessary. Yes, please. Yeah, I was going to ask, you know, what, what you know, effects it's this, unnecessary. this um, uh, yes. you know, these type of actions can have in Nigeria's near future. Like, after this administration uh, leaves in 2023, um, is there a way that, um, yeah. you know, institutions will be able to heal and, um, you know, we can maybe, you know, have a better sense of... Uh, uh, on the Nigerians' uh, respect to the constitution and, and laws and some of all of that, or um, is this going to be, you know, a, a, w a way of government that will be repeated over and over, seeing how this one has played out? Absolutely. 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 What I see happening um, is what has happened in the country 
If you remember, under Buhari, we had Nigerian Security Organization, NSO, headed by uh, Malaji Rafin Dadi. Okay? NSO has metamorphosed over the years into SSS, into DSS, but it hasn't become friendlier in nature. It hasn't um, matured over the years. So when you destroy the foundation of social institutions, it takes decades and decades for those institutions to recover, okay? It has gone to a stage in Nigeria where people do not believe in the rule of law because government itself does not believe in the rule of law. So it's going to take decades for us to recover from all of this. Look at Nigerian police. The way Nigerian police was used to suppress, to repress, to, 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 um, to maltreat people under Buhari 1884, that is the way that Nigerian police is still behaving. And that's what led to NSAS and all other problems we have in Nigerian police. So over the years, people managing this institution have come to believe that the only way to go is brutal force. They believe that the only way to go is for them to disrespect the human rights of the people. So to answer your question, this is going to be with us for a very long time because the government is setting a very dangerous precedent. Okay, whoever is coming in as the new, as the new president will simply look at what Buhari did and say, look, after all, he did it and he, he, he got away with it. Why can't I do it? Don't forget that what we are seeing today, we saw part of it under President Obasanjo. Okay, if you remember very well, he also did not respect the rule of law. He also took the laws into his hands. And about that left government since when? 2007, this is 2021, and this is happening to us. So in other 10, 15 years, this will still be there. And that's why we keep saying that we should invest in building institutions and not individuals. Okay, we should we should strengthen the judiciary. We should strengthen the laws governing the social contract between government and the people, so that whoever is managing any of the institutions would would dare not go beyond his or her boundary to 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 to, 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 to unveil all that we are seeing. It, it's shameful, honestly. I do not know, but I think Malami should be one of the worst performing ministers. Of attorney general that we've ever had in in, the, in this country, mm. really, it 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 it, it 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 it's sad. Okay, and Mr. unfortunately, people like that have the years of the president. People like that have earned the okay. trust of the president, and that's why we're in this mess. All right, Mr. Yes. Akibola, uh, turning now to look at another story we saw on the Nigerian Tribune and the Punch as well, and uh, is also on the Daily Independent. So the story is basically saying that the court has ordered the federal government to pay Rivers and Aqua Ibom $3.3 billion. Um, on the Punch newspaper, it says, um, court tells FG to pay Rivers Aqua Ibom $3 billion from recovered $62 billion. So that's the story we're seeing here. And we know that from as far back as 2017, um, these states have been suing the federal government over oil revenue. And uh, now they took, the, they took the federal government to court again, and the court has you know, swung the case in their favor, saying you know, they need to be paid what they do, what they do basically. Um, do you see the federal government obeying this order, and why exactly uh, this, this issue persists? The, the federal government has no reason not to obey this order, OK? Uh, the least I expect government to do is to go to the Supreme Court, which is the ultimate arbiter in, in, in matters like this. And that's the beauty of democracy, okay? Um, if government doesn't respect the, the decision of the court, it would be behaving to type, it, it, it would just be um, behaving true to uh, the reputation that it has earned over the years. And that would be quite unfortunate, okay? Once the court of law, a competent <laughs> Court of law has ruled on an issue. Government should obey. Okay, we 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 don't have time to go to the details of how we got here. But you remember, okay, that there are laws guiding each stage of transaction revenue and all of that. We have the concurrent list. We have the exclusive list. We have the residual list, and this clearly spells out the roles and responsibility of each arm of government. Okay, so if government is not satisfied with this ruling, yes, of course, the Supreme Court is there. Let it go to the Supreme Court. But what we would not like to happen is for government to disobey this court order through executive lawlessness. 
like I said, that early on, that would be setting a very dangerous precedent. All right. So, yes, of I course, the wanna... government should obey. All right, Mr. Kimbala, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, we always enjoy thank your you. perspective and uh, enjoy conversations you. with you. Have thank a great you very day. much. Thank you. All right, uh, stay with us. Uh, we're going to go on a short break. When we come back, we're moving into Today in History, uh, telling you things that happened on this day many years ago.